It's your girl Missy here, back with another one here to recap Power Book 2 Go Season 4, Episode 1, the final season. I don't die easy. Tomorrow is my birthday. It's my birthday. And all of you can give me a very special gift by watching this video until the end and coming back tomorrow to watch my Episode 2 predictions. Also, please like this video. All of this is free and I would really appreciate it. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give this episode a 9 easily. They delivered 110%. The top moments for me were Tariq getting his head in the game and coming up with a plan. What have I been saying every single season? Come up with a plan and think on your feet. Us finally getting to see Detective Carter. I think he had a nice introduction into the show. And also seeing Anya Covington. She definitely comes off very spoiled but over her mother's BS. Drew, gotta go. I've been saying it since last season. Um, I can't really take much more, but we have lots of ground to cover, so let's get started. Obi is called out about his disloyalty because a couple of Noma's goons knew about the green cards, so Obi ended up shooting both of them and told Noma that they're the ones who let Brayden in. Kane is on a level and wants Tariq dead because he thinks that Tariq shot Monet. Tariq has to figure out their next move after being betrayed by Noma, Kane, Drew, and Diana. Noba wants Tariq's head, and she puts everyone on a mission to find Tariq. She's sending a doctor to the penthouse to take care of Kane and his bullet wound and tells Effie to find Tariq because, I mean, she was smashing him. She should know where he's at. In this episode, we see potential issues that Effie will have this season due to her love for Tariq being conflicted with what Noma and Kane want. That's going to be a problem for her. Tariq's plan is to take Anya Covington so that they have the upper hand over Noma. Brayden had me weak this entire episode. He looked hella scary, but he managed to stay by Tariq's side. Let's see how long that lasts this season. So Pinky has eyes on Anya Covington and tells Tariq he better hurry up because she is on the move. Junior found information on Sack's external hard drive that connects Tariq and Councilman Tate to the expedited green cards for OB Okiki. So Blanca is not happy about the outcome of everything, but it's time to move on. And if Junior wants any type of career, he will move on. She told him to be done with it. They lost. Jenny has even moved on. She's dealing with catching people in the mob. She told Junior to leave his mess alone and he should have listened. So the walking dead decides to walk to the Weston's house instead of going to the penthouse to get his wound stitched up. Diana tries to tell Drew that Monet sacrificed her life to save her, but Drew is not really trying to hear it. He knows that if Monet wakes up from her coma, she will figure out their plan and they are dead. Drew doesn't want Monet to get away with having Lorenzo killed. Along with that, they gotta take Tariq out because Tariq is the only one that knows what they actually did coming up with this plan to get Monet out of here. But Tariq really knows that it was Tasha. So Drew, the mastermind, comes up with another plan to kidnap Becca. So Drew gotta go, period. This is the number one body that I am looking forward to this season. I need Diana to also stop going along with his BS because she tells Becca that Brayden is in trouble, he owes some people money, and that he reached out to her brothers for help. So Tariq and Brayden are trying to snatch Anya, and although they're outmanned and outgunned, Tariq has a way to outthink everyone by sending a diversion as the focus while they come through shooting. So I love the energy that Anya is on, but she is very spoiled and oblivious to what is going on behind her. However, her truck does manage to get away. This next scene is a life lesson here about people. What do I always talk about people and the subtle things they do that are red flags? So when there's a betrayal, oftentimes people act like there's no red flag, but if you pay attention, there usually is something. So Noma is pissed and puts everyone out of her house. Obi says everything they built is at risk. And Noma had to correct this fool by saying, don't lecture her about what she built. Just like a lame trying to take credit for what you built, don't let them do it. Also, this may have seemed subtle, but it's a red flag. When you build something, when you do something, when you accomplish something, and someone else tries to take the credit for it, you better watch them. You don't have to say anything in that moment, but listen. Your next move is to watch them and pay attention to how they're moving. 
But Obi goes on to touch Noma's arm, thinking with the wrong head, and tells her that Mecca is long gone, but he is there. This is why I'm glad that Noma slapped his ass, checked him, and told them the focus is her daughter. They're after Anya and puts a hundred thousand on Tariq and Brayden's head and tells them to spread the word. So in comes Anya and she wants to know what is going on with her being rushed around the city. Noma tries to tell her that it is because of what happened with her father. Anya is over it. She still has memories of her father being shot because all of this is very fresh. We find out that when Anya turns 21, she gets millions from her trust fund, but until then, NYU was supposed to be her focus, and it was until Noma pulled her out of school. So Noma tries to explain that there was a threat and wants to know why she can't just listen. So Anya is very smart because another life lesson, it's not always what people tell you that is important. It's what they're leaving out. So although Anya hears her mother, she also knows her well enough to know that key details are being left out. Kane arrives at the West End and knocks Trace in the mouth. Baby, this is Kane's MO, his signature move. You gonna get punched in the mouth. But he ends up pulling a gun on Robert. Robert says he don't know where Brayden is. Brayden's drug life and all that mess ain't got nothing to do with them. In comes my girl Effie, who has the common sense to know that they do not know where Brayden is and gives Robert a lifeline by basically feeding him the words that he doesn't know where Brayden is. Honestly, his parents would be the last place that he would go to right after that war. So Tariq needs a plan B, and this is when Brayden gets the call from Drew that they have his sister and to meet at Pier 90 or Becca is dead. Tariq calls Davis for help, and Davis is getting it in with two hotties. Tariq tells him that Noma, Effie, and the Tahatas are all after him. So Davis tells the Tariq that he's no longer his attorney. He got a letter from the bar, and he is in trouble, and he got to clear his own situation up. Davis tells Tariq to be safe and hangs up. Man, listen, Davis was about to slide. He was not trying to hear anything Tariq had to say at that moment. So Kane gets his bullet taken out and tells Effie that they have to kill Tariq. And she says, you know, she knows. You gotta pay attention to people. Their initial reaction will tell you everything you need to know. Y'all notice Effie said, I know. But what did she do first? She looked down and away. She's not on board with killing Tariq. It's not what people say, but their actions. Nonverbal communication tells it all. Diana gets a call from the hospital that Monet is having complication and Drew tells Diana to catch a cab to go see Monet. Diana dips and Drew continues on the mission with Becca in tow. So Drew is so lame to me. I really hate how he's going out, but Becca ends up macing him and getting far away from that fool. So Drew aims his gun towards Brayden and Becca and this is when Tariq rams the truck into Drew and yells out what is Monet and Kane going to do when Monet figures out their little plan. So Tariq has leverage to use on Drew and Diana, which gives him an upper hand for now. So Brayden takes Becca home and Robert tells Brayden to leave and never come back. He is not his son anymore. Mecca and Lorenzo appear to Monet while she is still in her coma and tell her that she's dying. So Lorenzo asks, what reason should she still be alive? So Monet tells Lorenzo that he was in jail and Mecca was a mistake. I'm glad she called them out. People love to call you out on your BS, but notice they never mention their own BS. I would have told them F both of y'all. I'm not reflecting on shit. The only deceased one that made an appearance that I respected was Zeke because he tells her that she never made things right between them. He was her escape plan, and she should have left him in North Carolina. Monet says that, you know, she was young when she gave him up, and she is sorry. Monet asks for a second chance so that she can do right by Kane, Drew, and Diana. Now, this needs to be her move, doing right by her children going forward. Once she finds out the truth, will she keep this same energy of wanting to do right by her kids? But Mecca and Lorenzo, I'm sorry, they could kick rocks. Y'all, man, y'all dead. Get up on out of here. So Junior tells Paws that he's trying to get his case off the ground. He is going to tell his target that his only hope of avoiding prison is to cooperate. And this is his last shot at Tariq St. Patrick. Man, Paws heard the name St. Patrick and tried to warn Junior he knows what they did to Angela. 
He is all she got left. Blanca tried to warn Junior and now his mother. He claims that he is not going to do anything dangerous, but yet he decides to go on a solo mission and confront a criminal. What an idiot. So Davis' letter says that he has multiple conflicts of interest and he may lose his license for this. In comes Obi and Noma asking him to give up Tariq. She has a 100000 bounty on each of their heads. Davis is like, F your money. And so Noma hopes that Davis does not regret his decision. I hope nothing happens to Davis, but usually when characters give you a warning, it doesn't turn out good. So Davis, in turn, warns Tariq to get the heck out of New York. There is a $100,000 bounty on their head. Tariq looked and sounded so defeated in this next scene. He apologized to Brayden for even getting him roped up into all of this mess. The thought of living like two normal college kids doesn't sound quite bad right now. Actually, it sounds real good. But Tariq is going to get them out of the situation. They just have to go to Stansfield so that Tariq can grab a bag of money. Drew is still on demon time, tells Diana to smother Monet when she wakes up. Drew is something else. I've been saying it since last season. Tells her that Tariq got away and that Tariq said he would tell Monet everything once she wakes up. At some point, Drew needs to just stop it and realize that his plan was not it. I've been saying this man gotta go. Y'all remember I called it. To me, he is the mastermind, he is a problem, and he will always be until he is out of here. I don't feel like Drew can ever be trusted again. Shout out to Brashandria for knowing that Junior was the cops and not telling him where Tariq was and making sure that Zoe did not either. Notice how she smiled at Kane, asking if he was Diana's brother. Kane was on a mission at that moment, but he made sure he looked back at that ass though. I'm not even mad at him. Brashandria is stacked up. She is a very beautiful lady. But Kane texts Noma and tells her that they found Tariq in Stansfield, so now everybody is looking for Tariq. And Effie texts Tariq, letting him know that Kane is there to kill him, and there may be others as well. This is when Tariq runs into Junior asking questions about green cards for Obi Okeke family and mentions Noma being his connect. Drops the bomb that Angela Valdez was his auntie. Sax kept the file of everything, and if Tariq leaves now, he will get an arrest warrant for the drugs he's moving for Noma. This is when Noma goons get the shooting. Junior ends up shooting him, and Brayden ends up knocking Junior in the head. Tariq takes the hard drive as leverage and call Noma to tell her that Junior has been digging into her business, and if she wants to stay off the radar, Junior gotta go. He'll give her the evidence, but if Junior is alive, she loses it all. Obi tries to talk some sense into her and tells her to accept the truth or she's going to end up killing a college kid on campus with the federal agent also being kidnapped or killed in the process. Law enforcement will be after them and with authorities investigating Lombardi's murder in Italy, they can't go back there. So Noma says when the smoke settles, she wants him and everything he loves killed. But for now, they can live. But he cannot move any product. And that is the price for the truce. So to clean all this mess up, Tariq puts Prince on the fan's gun to make it look like he took out the shooter. Tariq kills Junior and Brayden ends up reporting a weapon on campus and that he heard gunshots. And once the police get there, they tell the police their little story they came up with so everything is good. Kane and Effie got a text to stand down. Kane acts like he didn't get the text. He sees Tariq and runs after him. And this is, what, this is when Tariq calls Drew and tells Drew that Noma called a truce, but Kane is still after him. Unless he wants Kane to know what really happened with Monet, he better intervene. So Drew does just that. He tells Kane to stand down. Also tells Kane that he talked to Diana and she said it wasn't Tariq that shot Monet. She made a mistake and to ask her about it when they get to the hospital. Kane is going to get to the bottom of it. He said he was, and he's going to do just that, because it's not adding up. So, and you notice that look he gave Tariq? Then he looked at Effie. Kane is going to start putting things together in regards to Elf Effie helping Tariq as well. One thing about Kane, he going to put something together, and he's going to find out what really happened and that Drew and Diana was behind it. So Kane asks Diana who shot Monet and she says she made a mistake and she does not feel like fighting right now. Monet wakes up and her kids are right by her side. Monet asks who did it and they say they do not know. 
Monet tells them to find out. So Tariq wants to know what they're going to do now that they can't move product. And Brayden feels like this is actually a good thing. But y'all heard what Tariq said. Noma could be waiting for the right time to kill them or his mother. So we meet Detective Carter and he is praying and very upset, bitter, full of wrath and anger. He stays close to his faith and he has been in pain since he lost his wife, Denise. She was actually killed. So the task force that he is running keeps him busy and motivated. He knows that Denise will like the fact that he's making the streets safer. So Paz goes to see Carter and tells him her son, Junior, was murdered. He had just joined the DEA and they're claiming it was a school shooter. But he was investigating Tariq and other dealers and she wants Carter to help. Carter says that he will nail whoever took her son and he makes that a promise. All right, cousins, what are the highlights for you? What are your predictions for the next episode? Let's talk about it. All opinions are welcome. Please comment your thoughts. Like this video for me. See you later. Woo!